Welcome back to the channel and this is part one of making this looping animation in Blender. This one is a ton of fun. So this is going to be part one where we do the modeling and the animation. And then in part two, we'll do some nice materials and lighting and render it out as a final uh, composition. We'll even do, be doing a little bit of compositing to make it look a little bit extra. So um, if you want to learn how to do this, keep watching. It's really easy. And in the description below, you can support me on Patreon and it'll also give you access to these blend files and these projects that I work on. So let's jump in. So with a new scene, open up in Blender. Let's select all of the default objects and press delete. We're gonna go into our front orthographic view. Shift A, under our mesh options, we're gonna add in a cylinder. Let's go to our add cylinder settings and let's make it six on the count. Let's close this and now let's go RX90 and hit enter. Control A and let's apply that rotation. We're gonna tab into edit mode. We're gonna go S and Y for now, about this much. And then we're gonna to go to our face select option. In our right view, in wireframe, we're just gonna click and drag and select all of these faces here. Then we're gonna type in F3, we're gonna go extrude. We're gonna to go to extrude, and there should be an option for individual faces. Click on that. And then just move your mouse, and let's just extrude it out roughly about this much. And then go into your front orthographic view. In your front orthographic view, go over here to your transform pivot, make an individual origins and just go S to scale it down about this much. And then go back to median point and then go R to rotate it. And let's go probably about, I'd say this much. And then go into your right orthographic view and then go S, Y and just scale it till it's all looking the same width again, like this. You might want to select just these front faces and go S, Y, 0 and hit enter. Then select these ones over here and then go X and delete those faces. We're now going to go to our modifiers and give this a mirror modifier anyway. And we want to change it here to the Y axis, not the X. And then we're going to go G, Y and move this forward. Enable clipping and then go G, Y and move it back till it all clips together. Let's go about this much. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a face select option. Let's select these faces over here, like so. Let's press I to inset it, about this much, and then E to extrude in. I to inset it again, and then E to extrude out, like so. And now let's tab out, and let's go give this a bevel modifier. Let's come over here and bring down the amount, and give it some more segments, and let's go right click and go shade smooth. So now we have this thing over here. Pretty cool, right? So now let's go Shift A. Let's just also add in a plane. In edit mode, let's just grab this plane. It's really important that we do this in edit mode so the 3D uh, or the pivot point stays here in the middle. Bring it up here and then go RX90. And then just go G and just move it in here into the corner here. Go to your vertex select and then just select the vertex here. Bring it here. Bring this guy over here and then just make a little window coming through here like so. Pretty cool, okay? And then you're just gonna go A, just like everything, G, Y, move it this way. And then you can go E to extrude and just give it some thickness. A to select all of it and go Alt N and just go recalculate outside to fix any, fix any potential normal issues. And then in your front view, let's just change the transform pivot to 3D cursor since it's in the center of our world. We can now go shift D R six zero. So we're just shift D and then rotating it by 60 and then press enter. And then go shift R a few more times. And we did that by 60 degrees because there are six of these panels and six can go into 360, 60 times. So that's the maths behind that. And now because our origin point is in the center here, we can give this a mirror as well, change it to Y, and now we have these windows. I'm gonna tab back out, and because we wanna see through these while we're working, let's just go to our object data properties. Under our viewport display, we can come to the display as and make it wired. Now, um, let's come here, shift A, let's add in a empty. We're gonna make it a cube. Let's select both these objects and holding in shift select the empty and then go control P and let's go object keep transform. So now we can grab the empty and control everything. 
And with the empty, we're gonna come here to our timeline and on frame one, we're gonna go I and insert a rotation keyframe. Then we're gonna to come to our end frame value, make it 150 exact. And then we're gonna to come to frame 150. Let's go press N to bring up our properties. Let's go to item. And then under the Y here, we're gonna make it negative 360 degrees. And we're gonna press I to insert a keyframe. And then select both of these keyframes on the timeline and press T on your keyboard and then make it linear under the interpolation. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we can see this is the exact rate of rotation that we are looking for as the animation is playing out, okay? So now let's get into the balls. So we're gonna go shift A, let's add in a UV sphere, right click, shade smooth, and let's go S to scale it down, G to move it over here, and kind of just, um, let's just also change our transform pivot back to median point. We want to just kind of sitting in here like this. Go to your right orthographic view and make sure it's not too wide. We don't want it sticking through these little windows. So just fitting into this cavity nicely. Then go control A and apply that scale. Super important. We're then going to come here and select our Ferris wheel thing here. Let's go to our physics. Give it a rigid body. Let's just make it animated. Make sure to change the type to passive. And then under the shape, make sure to make it mesh. That's really important. Now select the windows, holding and shift select the Ferris wheel, and then type in F3 and go copy from, and then go copy from active. And now if you click on the glass panels, they share those exact same properties, and we don't have to do double the work. Now we're gonna select our sphere. We're gonna go rigid body. Let's just make that active. It should be by default. And then under the shape, we're gonna make it sphere. And now if we go to frame one, which is important, we hit the space bar, we can see we have this. Pretty cool, right? So now what we can do is we're gonna grab this ball actually and go G, and we make sure you're on frame one, very important. We're gonna go G and move it over here. And we're gonna place this one so it's sitting right in here, like this, as close as we can get it without sticking it through the mesh. And then in our front orthographic view still, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate, bring one in over here, tuck it in just so it's sitting right here not penetrating the mesh, that's really important. And then we're gonna go Shift D and bring one right up over here, just kind of sitting just above here, but not too far out, just kind of over it like this. So now from frame one, if we hit the space bar, we can see that's good timing. But what we need to do now is grab this ball here, Shift D to duplicate and Z, move one above. I'm still on frame one, by the way. And then go Shift R and let's duplicate this a few times, maybe this many. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven balls. We can always delete some if we need to. We're then gonna go Shift A. Let's just quickly add in a cylinder. Let's come to the Add Cylinder Settings. Let's make it 32 again, which is what it was. G, let's move it over here, S to scale. And let's place it. And we want it just to be big enough so the balls can fit in it like this. And we'll have it about here. Tab into edit mode, grab the top birds and then go G, Z, and move it up and then go X and delete those faces. Then select the bottom cap, X and delete those faces. And then we're just gonna go E to extrude, S to scale, these guys here. E to extrude and Z to bring it up, S to scale. And then E to extrude up, just a little bit like so. A to select everything and go Alt N and go recalculate outside. Tab back out, then go right click and go shade auto smooth. And now we can go give this a rigid body and let's make that passive. Let's make the shape mesh. Okay, so now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we should see this. How cool is that? And it should look pretty much loopable if we've set everything up right. So that's pretty much the hard bit done. So let's go to frame one, let's go shift A, let's add in a circle. Tab into edit mode and go G, Y, move it over. And let's give that a mirror modifier. R, X, nine, zero. Let's go G, Y, move it back. S to scale it a little bit. E to extrude, S to scale. Let's just pop this guy back a little bit, maybe like that. And we're just making a little cap here. You can model this however you want. I'm gonna go something like this and then E to extrude, S to scale again. 
And then I might just go Shift D to duplicate, S to scale, E to extrude, like so. F to fill it in. Control B, create a bevel, roll it a few times. Something like that, tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. Then give it a subdivision surface modifier. And uh, we should come here to the mirror by the way and just make it Y instead of X. And you could leave it like this, but another cool thing you could do is in your right orthographic view in edit mode, you can go shift A, add in a torus RX90, RZ90, S to scale it down and then G to move it over. And then just select, I guess about this much and delete those verts. Just wanna make sure I don't grab the wrong thing. So we just want a quarter of this torus like so. Okay, just a quarter of it like this. And then we can just grab this edge here and go E to extrude and Z, extrude it up about this much and then grab the whole thing, move it out. And maybe let's just extrude this bit here like that, kind of like a drinking straw. And then let's just select the whole thing, Alt S and just scale it down along the normals. Tab back out. And now you can kind of grab this whole thing and you can rotate it in your front view by 180 degrees. So it's facing down. But this is an optional bit, like I said. So if you didn't want to make that, you don't have to. Okay, but now at least it looks like something is holding this. Okay, I'm gonna make sure just to save this as I'm going. I'm just gonna call it toot. Okay. Okay, what did I accidentally press just now? <laughs> yeah, anyway. So let's now Go in our front view, shift A, let's add in a plane. G, Z to move it down. Tab into edit mode, S, X, let's go like so. And in my right view, I'm gonna go R, X, nine, zero, hit enter. I'm just gonna move it back. I'm gonna place it about here. And I'm just gonna grab this and move it way down. Grab this guy over here. And in the right view, I'm just going to go E to extrude it along the Y. I'm gonna bring it in about this much and then E to extrude up. Let's go about that much, okay? And then E to extrude on Y again. And then E to extrude up like so, and maybe E to extrude out like this. Be as creative as you want. I'm gonna go something like that. Tab back out, right click, let's go shade smooth and let's give it a bevel modifier. Control A and apply that scale then bring down the amount and bump up the segments. So now we have something like this. Now in our front view, we're gonna go Shift A, add in a camera, move the camera back, go into the camera view and let's just get a nice position that we like, something like this. That looks pretty cool. And I might actually just rotate my camera just to give it a bit more of a dynamic look. Okay, something like that looks really cool. Okay, so what we have here now is it done. Let's just quickly go to our, our scene properties. Let's go to the rigid body world. Under the cache, let's just make it 150 frames, just like our frames here on our timeline. And actually before we click bake, what we're gonna do is just select the glass here and let's just go to our modifiers and I've already done it, but just make sure to apply that mirror modifier. That's really important before we do the baking. Back to our scene properties for that. Let's just go to the rigid body world and let's go ahead and bake it. Okay, so now we should see, if we start at frame one, we have this 100% looping um, animation here of our spheres. How cool is that? And we can actually come here to the end and just bump it down to 149 so we don't get a, a double frame towards the end. But there we have it. That is a very satisfying looking animation that we've made. So in part two, we'll be doing the lighting and the materials and we'll make this look absolutely fantastic.